The last thing I wanted to show you within this uh, first little introductory sort of um, set here of examples and tricks with working with indefinite integrals was how to actually find that constant term. So here's an example. So we start off with dy dx equals 3x squared plus x. And the goal is to find an equation for y. But we're given some information about the original function. So what we're going to do is, again, we start off with a derivative. We want the original. We have to do the opposite of a derivative, which again, big surprise, that's the antiderivative or the integral. So I want to find the antiderivative of this. So that's the first step, of course, is to just find the antiderivative like I normally would. So let's just get going. So I'll say y equals, and this is a nice simple one. I can just deal with this one on its own, and I can deal with that one. So the antiderivative of 3x squared is going to be 3 times x to the power of, and I have to go one more. Remember, I'm using this trick back here. Uh, if we have something to the power of you know, n, the antiderivative of it is you know, one extra power divided by that same number. So in this case, it's going to be, whoops, it's going to be 3x to the power of 3 over 3. And all that plus, well, here I have x to the power of 1. So it becomes x to the power of 2 over 2. And I would just say plus c. And normally I'd be done. However, I'm given this fact that when y equals, uh, sorry, when x equals 0, y is 10. So that means now, see, I can just go one extra step here. So maybe I'll do that uh, right here. So I know that when x equals 0, I know that y is 10. That's a fact that I'm told. So you see, if we're given something like this, and we're told to, you know, to find the equation for y. Without given extra information, this is the best you could do. But because we have all this extra information, we can actually deal with it. So let's make x equals 0 here. Well, in that case, that would actually cancel out. x equals 0, that would cancel out. So I would have y equals, well, 10. So I'd have 10 equals, well, 0 plus 0 plus c. So 10 equals c. Well, that's awesome, then. That means, then, that y equals, I'll just rewrite it, and this time, well, 3 over 3, that cancels out. So it just becomes a 1, so it's x cubed plus x squared over 2 plus 10. That is my exact value here. That is my equation for y. And again, remember I kept saying you can always check if you've done it right by just taking the derivative. I haven't always shown you how to do that, so let's just double check this one here. So just to check that we've done it right. I'll say take derivative of this. So take the derivative of the equation for y. So in other words, I want y primed. Well, actually, I shouldn't call it y primed. I should call it dy dx because that's the notation they had. So let's just take the derivative of this thing and see and hope that we get this. So dy dx, let's see now. So the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. That works. Um, and the derivative of this would be 2x to the power of 1. So it'll be plus 2x over 2, because it was still divided by 2 here. And derivative of 10 disappears, it goes poof. Now the only thing I have to do then is, well, 2 over 2 is just 1. So I get that dy dx, oops, here there should be a y, equals 3x squared plus x. Is that the same as this? It sure is. So because these two match, see the derivative of this thing, is what I wanted it to be, I know I've done it correctly. So you can always check your answer when you're doing these. Right? Sometimes it's more complicated looking to actually find this antiderivative. But once you've found it, you can always take the deriv derivative of it in order to check if you've done it right. That's why, like I said before, the antiderivative is the opposite of a derivative, which means when you're done, take the derivative and you can check if you've done it right. So although the words antiderivative uh, and derivative may sound a little bit uh, strange, hopefully you see that they're just opposites of each other. That's all they are. So this is at least a nice little trick for working with indefinite integrals. 
And now we're going to start with the next couple of videos. I'm going to show you what to do with definite integrals, which means what happens when we have bounds? What happens when we actually want to find the area under a curve? Then we can actually deal with it under very specific circumstances. So this becomes very powerful to do what we started off in the first set of uh, integral videos that I've made when I said we can find the area underneath a really curvy looking curve. Now we actually have all the tools that we need in order to do it. Mine is just one little trick that's going to be called the fundamental theorem of calculus. So that's coming next. And after that, we can use that to find areas under all sorts of really weirdo curves. In fact, we can even take the area between two weird curves. So that's going to be something kind of cool that we can find the exact values for those.